Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Huh? Even ability to tell the neighbor's dog that it can't bite you. Hallelujah. Monday Rishai or Kata. No, I first learned it from my pops, you know, my dad. My dad, he's got this, somebody was sick, the dog on me. He goes, in Jesus' name, the dog just like ran like he got hit by, you know, a, a pellet from a pellet gun. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> I can have a gift to be able to deal with dogs. One time my dad was uh, putting up a tent. <laughs> my dad was putting up a tent, and there was a, they discovered that they laid out the tent over top of a bunch of hornet's nest. Hornets in the ground? I'm not saying those hornets in the ground. I mean, those guys can be absolutely nasty critters. And so the preacher who's with him says, Man, listen, we're, I don't know what we're going to do. And my dad said, well, let's sew the tent up. And he said, we can't sew the tent up. He said, yeah, we sew the tent up. We take dominion. We take authority over these bees, and we command them to stay in the ground. They cannot come out of the ground. And, of course, the preacher that was helping him looked at him pretty much the way many of you are looking at me right now. <laughs> and he just said, watch. Let's just do this. Watch how this works. And what, what happens is we try to make the things of the Spirit. Am I on yet? Huh? We try to make the things of the Spirit complicated. They're not. What's complicated is living compromised lives. That's what's complicated. People want to live their life in the world and then try to function in spiritual gifts. Just forget about it. People want to become constantly. I watch this. I watch people nurture the wrong thing. They nurture in doubt and unbelief. They, you want to be nurturing faith. You want to be denying doubt and unbelief. People live in sorrow, sadness, doubt, and unbelief. And really, it really is govern, fears governing, governing them. Okay? The, the Lord makes it really very plain. He says, <laughs> mind the things of the Spirit. You know? There's life and peace in mind in the things of the Spirit. So to the Spirit, what are you going to get? If you sow to the Spirit, what are you going to get? That's right. You're going to reap life forevermore. Life forevermore is you're reaping the God kind of life. God's not going to be mocked. You said to the flesh, you're going to reap. People say, I'm living in hell. Because you're sown in the flesh. You're reaping corruption. You know, stop it. You know, just stop it. You get all these excuses. God doesn't like me. Excuses as though somebody else is doing this to them. No, actually, everything that's going on, you created it. Uh, you created it. Oh, boy, we hate taking responsibility for our own actions. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, somebody else did it to me. No, you did it to you. And God, Father, in his loving kindness, has come to show us the paths of life so we can walk in them. If we get, if, if somebody just show me, where am I supposed to put my next step so I don't end up in a pit, okay? And the Lord says, I'll show you what, that pit, what to do, but, or take, put your next step. I mean, I I, so many times in my life, I've had those moments. I mean, I remember when Joshua was just, you know, uh, three, four years old, and I'm walking around in the hallway of the house praying for him, and I'm just out praying for him and just, just being flooded with the goodness of heaven. I'm just asking the Lord, Lord, how did I get so blessed? How did I end up so blessed? And, you know, then, then just hearing my spirit by taking heed unto my word, by giving heed, by by observing by doing what i told you to do hey it, the way of the righteous isn't hard the way the transgressor is hard okay the, the people who never get it they continue to be abused by the enemy they allow the enemy say here you know here's a bat beat me up for a little while you know <laughs> here you beat me up last time with this bat here go ahead and use this other kind of you know torturous instrument just go ahead and just slam you know just slam me you know uh, we, we just want to stop doing that and we want to stop that with the program of sin looking desirable. And the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life looking like the only pleasure we're going to get out of life. And so to, to do that, we're going to have to begin to just, just begin to interact with the Lord. And, and, and of course, in, in functioning and flowing in the gifts of the Spirit and being in a school of the Spirit fundamentally is being in the Word of God. That's fundamental. You, it's got, you, you want the Word of God to be in you. You want it to... You want the Word of God to begin to impact your perceptions, the way you perceive, the way that you think, the way that you analyze. I mean, uh, the, the way that you react. And that's because you're going to give yourself to the Word. You're going to give yourself, you're going to read about Jesus, you're going to want to do Jesus. Because that's what the Holy Ghost does. That's what He does. You read about Jesus, you want to do what Jesus did. That's what the Holy Ghost puts on the inside of us, you know. I, I can't stand watching this, you know, this, 
the, the, these various different commercials about the various different groups and whatnot that take care of, um, that take care of, of crippled children. I can't stand it because I just want to crawl on television and get everybody healed. And I, I'm just so sick and tired of people running interference against the kingdom of God because if they're, 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 they're not really giving them the answers. But if, the, and if those, you know, interferences weren't put into place, and I hate, you know, some people could get mad at me for saying this about the Shriners and others. If they were there, people would be desperate for answers. And when now faith and desperation, faith come. Because people are saying, look, I want this more than I want anything else. I need this more than I need anything else. Well, I'm just believing the Lord for the day. But for that day, there's got to be people who know how to move in faith in order for the gifts of the Spirit to be activated in their life. And moving in faith is really just, it's got, you cannot dis detach these things from relationship with the Lord. And what does that look like? People would have a subjective relationship with the Lord. I've known guys who um, basically began to step into various different giftings, for example, in the word of knowledge. And they didn't know the word, of, the word, and the enemy got right in on that. And they were just turned into a bunch of flakes. Okay? Um, I had a person say to me the other day, are you a mind reader? No, I'm not a mind reader. Well, then how is it that you just told us everything we just did the past two hours? I just spoke to you out of inspiration. You stood in front of me. You sat in front of me. You asked me a question. And I just started answering, not out of the intellect, but just out of inspiration. You, you know, if I would have analyzed myself, I was off topic. They asked a question, and I gave them the answer they were really looking for. I didn't really didn't even respond to their question. They asked a question. What did they do? They activated within my life a gifting. Is the gifting going to work? Yeah, because I'm not sitting around playing, uh, you know, poker and somebody's asking, you know, trying to get a word of knowledge about what's in somebody other, somebody what's uh, somebody else's hand. What do they have? Oh, two aces and a king. I mean, I, it ain't going to work that way. It, it isn't going to work for self. The things of the kingdom aren't going to work for self benefit. They're not going to work for our own self promotion. Um, Gehazi learned that. Oh, my master changed his mind. Give me some raiment and, you know, and, uh, and some money. <laughs> yeah, you can spot. You get in here it is leprosy now, okay? And so, you know, it, this, is for, this is for real, nonprofit. <laughs> I mean, nonprofit with respect to money, but for profit with respect to the anointing. Amen. We get to for prophecy. Amen. For speaking out of the realms of the Spirit. Now, hallelujah, it's the Word of God that trains me that, with that. I, I, look at, I look at the Word of God, and I look at the, the things that God gives to us inspirationally. So natural. I don't make them complicated. It's just so natural. I mean, if, if somebody gets a vision to do something in the kingdom of God, you know what you have? You have a fertile ground now to begin functioning in faith, okay? Let's just say, okay, you want to clothe orphans, okay? Now, all of a sudden, you want to clothe orphans? Ah, I've got an idea to begin to make a line of clothing. I'm going to tell you right now, faith will explode. It will explode. Why? Because it's all about the kingdom of God. You want to clothe uh, orphans, and now God gives you, you, you get this creative idea from heaven to be able to have a clothing line, and now God breathes on it because you begin to move in faith. Faith will always take you where fear will prevent you. So you're going to have to get over fear. Now, listen, you know, what happens is I watch it in the context of church all the time. People just are handicapped. They don't want to do anything because they don't want to be told that they're wrong. you under the dominion and reign of fear. It has nothing to do with other than the fact that you're a scaredy cat. <laughs> and it's time for you to get some, you know, stamina, some stand-up stamina, some backbone, and um, say, I'm not going to live in fear anymore. And then when you say, I'm not going to live in fear anymore, then you ask, Father, Father, I don't want to live in fear anymore. Just come to me with your love. He does it. I think one of the most important things to moving and flowing and functioning against the Spirit for me is that, is that I'm moving in the realms of love and compassion. So I'll ask the Holy Ghost. Because see, this is a relationship. It's got to be interactive. And if I can get you to be interactive with the Holy Spirit in the school of the Spirit, then you're going to be led by Him. You're going to be guided by Him. Hallelujah. And you're going to function in Him. And the outworking against the Spirit is going to be so simple. So how do I get interactive? I say, Lord, fill me up with some love here. I need some love. Activate love in me is really what I'm saying. Activate this love, your love in me. I'm giving God permission to bless me. If you can get this, people don't, people go, oh, that just sounds like a catchy little phrase. No, 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 no. It's for real. I've proven it over and over again. I've watched it being proven. 
where you just give God permission to bless you. How often would you like to be blessed? That then, then, that often, then give God permission to bless you. Now all of a sudden we're praying without ceasing. What are we doing? Are we doing some religious exercise of pulling some, you know, basic, you know, religious beads, if you would? No, we're not. We're interacting. We're saying, Father, I need some wisdom right now. Holy Spirit, lead me. You know, let me he help you with something in the school of the Spirit. Fundamentally, there's two very important things, love and truth, okay? For, understand, he's spirit truth. He will not mix it up with any kind of lie. We lie to ourselves all of the time. Believe you me. You were conditioned and trained from early childhood when you were an expert at manipulation. There is no manipulator's expert in manipulation like a, like a three-year-old. So from the time that you were a little child, you have been trained up, and then you get into school, and then they make you an artist of it. I mean, now you can manipulate with no one knowing. Now you can play tricks on everybody. You can learn how to act in such a way. You can learn to smile as you kill, as John Lennon said. I mean, you don't want to say it. Just to quote a, a, a heathen. Okay, but it's right. People to learn. They learn how to smile as they kill. They learn how to be smiley and love you. Oh, I love you. It's so good to see you. Turn around and go, oh, I can't stand that person that I all I can do, God help me, it's all I can do to put up with it. I mean, that stuff has got to stop because the Holy Ghost ain't gonna be in that. He ain't gonna be in that. When when we are living under the governorship of hate and fear, what's gonna happen is we're gonna have these critical attitudes and suspicion about people. And it will stop, it will block, it will shut down, clearly shut down the discerning of spirits. Because where, uh, where criticism or suspicion, okay, is allowed to work in our life, it is literally working anti, like anti-Christ, it's working anti to the discerning of spirits. We're just being so critical, it's actually getting us into another realm, it's opposite. It's like, once again, giving yourself over to doubt when you're supposed to be giving yourself over to faith. Giving yourself over to hate when you're supposed to be giving yourself over to love. So when you begin to recognize this, you begin to put a watch on your mouth. You go, oh, if I'm talking bad about someone, I'm literally shutting myself down from being able to give the discerning of spirit or the word of knowledge or to give the word of faith in any way to someone. I want to shut that stuff down. And we have to be committed to this because he's the spirit of truth. So we want to we want to we want to hang with him. We want to move with him. We want to do what he does. Then fundamentally, we got to understand these two very important characteristics: love and truth. Everybody says, "Oh man, let's get around let's get around a table and practice." You know what? what you know, putting together our different ideas that we've got in our mind to paint a picture of the word of knowledge. Forget the seance. Let's just get over here and start walking. I'm gonna say it again. Forget the seance. Let's get over here and start walking and developing our lives in the Holy Ghost. Doing what he does. So I'm going to say, okay, Lord, I want to learn how to walk in truth. I want to learn how to walk transparent. I'm not going to harbor something. and I'm not going to harbor hate in my heart. I'm not going to harbor offense or accusation in my heart. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to necessarily just tell people, you know, what I think or what I feel because that may not be the right thing to do. Sometimes it is when it's inspired by the Holy Ghost. And I'm going to talk about that here in just a minute. Inspiration, doing it out of inspiration. But I do have to learn what Leviticus chapter 18 says and what also Matthew chapter 18 says. That if your, if your brother offends you, go to your brother and tell him what he did wrong, lest you should hate him in your heart. And it's no accident that the law of God and, and, and that which Jesus declared have, you know, kinsmanship chapters. I mean, Leviticus chapter 17 and 18, and, because it goes over into 18. And then also Matthew chapter 18. I'm not going to allow stuff. I'm going to be pure heart. I've got to be unburdened. I can't walk into the platform or into a state of ministry or where I'm at right now with something in my heart, something, you know, something troubling me, some problematic, problematic issue. In fact, being really, really tired will affect how you function in the anointing because you're just like walking around. Uh, you know, the Lord always blesses us and he encourages us and he strengthens us, but it, it affects how we function and flow in the anointing. You know, walking around with a burden in my heart, I keep my heart with all diligence. I'm, I'm going to keep a pure heart. I'm not going to allow something to be on me. Okay, and I'll give you this example. Okay, you're getting ready to go to bed, right? You get an email, and the email says, I hate you. Because you just absolutely, you, you, stole, my, you stole my precious thing. You didn't steal nothing. <laughs> and I heard that you were talking bad about me. You're not going to sleep. It's going to affect your sleep. 
Because it's fishing is a meaningful person. They just told you that they hate you because you stole their precious thing and that you've been talking bad about them. You didn't do none of that. And now you're trying to ring them on the phone, trying to get this straightened out, and they're not there. So what are you going to do? You've got to be burdened with the thing all night, right? Well, that gives you just an, a kind of like a baseline, if you would, to understand how the interference that that kind of stuff would run against you being able to just let the Holy Ghost take over and have nothing else impacting your emotions but the Lord. That's the beautiful thing about worship and praise. It's where we just take and clean the shelf off. I watch people all the time. I watch them. They're stuck. They're thinking about this problem and this issue from the things that go on in their home to the things that all go all the way over to their work. You're stuck, man. You've got to make Jesus bigger than all of that stuff. You've got to turn your heart towards heaven. When you just, by the act of doing it, Father knows the frailty of who we are. And he comes and he just, Holy Ghost takes what little bit we give him and he multiplies it. It's just where do we find the commitment and the faithfulness to do these things? If you want to flow in this Holy Ghost, if you want to flow in the anointing, you're going to learn how to do this. Otherwise, you're not going to have it. It's just going to be, it's going to be real spotty. For me, I praise God that I get to flow and function all nine gifts of the Spirit anytime, whenever they're needed, whenever they're activated by a need in the kingdom of God in my life. However, I want to flow in them much stronger. I want to flow in them in a much more matured way and a much more effective way. Well, good, okay? But guess what? If you're just waiting to function, flow in the gifts of the Spirit just like Jesus did and you're not going to start till you do, you're never going to have nothing. Are you listening to me? Because this is going to be grow. This is going to grow and it's going to mature and it's going to develop in our life. So it really doesn't matter. It has nothing whatsoever to do with the framework of how we perceive things and how, and how we you know, measure things. It simply has to do with our obedience. Okay? I'm going to... I'm going <laughs> to... I've been going out raising the dead since the first opportunity I had to raise somebody from the dead and I'm not going to give... I'm not going to stop. Huh? I'm not going to walk by some dead corpse and not say, get up in Jesus' name. So I'm, I'm going to get some kind of activation in this thing. I'm going to give it a go. Okay? Why? Because he told me to do it. Oh, I'm not, so I'm not going to do it. I don't have any particular inspiration. i got a big, gigantic inspiration over here. It's called the Word of God. He said, go raise the dead. And so, we, of course, when you allow fear to dominate you and govern you, and you're able to just convince yourself of anything you tell yourself, called deception, lie, falsehood, because you're able to just self-justify, and you're able to give an excuse for yourself. Quit giving excuses for yourself. Just say, I'm wrong, and I need to change. You know what? Just say, I did it wrong, and I'm sorry. I mean, come on, okay? Uh, just, just say, you know, I'm, I'm constantly getting this trap, and I don't want to be in it anymore. Don't make an excuse for yourself, because all you're doing is painting a picture for yourself that is not real, and now you're going to live in that which you created. Holy Ghost ain't going to be there. He ain't going to be there. He's going to be calling you out of that prison. Saying, look, you know, you, you, <laughs> you created a prison for yourself. You actually forged and designed the chains. And you actually also forged and designed the key. And you locked yourself up. Huh? So what, you know, why create a prison for yourself to live in? Why not learn the simplistic laws of the spirit of life that are in Christ Jesus and do them? Okay? Because the Lord wants to show us how to function in these things so naturally. Okay? So I walk up to uh, Heather and um, to pray for her on Sunday morning. And, you know, it was, I, didn't even have any, I didn't need any discernment because I saw, saw her favoring one of her arms. Okay? So I said, one of your arms hurting, yeah? So, yeah, let's go. We start praying for that arm. Okay? Now, I'm going to ask her to do something. Okay? I'm going to ask her to do something that's going to pull on her. Because some people want sympathy more than they want anything else. They want you to feel bad for them more than they want anything else. So I'm going to tell you to lift that hand up. What do you mean lift that hand up? Don't you feel bad for that? You know, you're not going to get healed that way. You know, you just want sympathy. Okay, I can't say that because it's going to make it worse, right? I just dug the ditch bigger for, bigger for him. So she immediately lifts her hands up. So she lifts her hands up. I've, I, I'm sitting there with my eyes open, and sometimes i got them closed, but most of the time I've got them open. And then I see, I see a literal vision of an ear. That's all the Lord gives me. I was like, Lord, why do we play charades? Why can't you just come right out and just tell me? Because Father wants us to, he wants us to learn. It isn't charades. It's him being willing to grace us with the ability to learn how to be sensitive and flow in the Holy Ghost 
abstract from everything that goes on in what we call concrete because what we call concrete is really the abstract so we're getting a reverse so all of a sudden i'm praying for her i said so who's got an ear problem heather goes oh well actually i have an ear problem okay so here we are right in the midst of just uh, am i trying to do anything no i'm having fun but I'm, I'm, I'm there. do i have any pressure no you know somebody said oh you you come in the ministry with us tonight and you know and i would tell you right now we're going to count you as a false prophet unless we have five healings and you know whatever else four <laughs> words of knowledge and now you and if you're not careful you're under pressure because you, you just tell people you call them up and you said you know i'm going to tell you right now i'm hitting 20 home runs tonight you are yeah 20 home runs and i'm going to bat 30 people in while i'm doing it <laughs> you just loaded yourself up uh-huh yeah oh man we just had so many miracles and so many signs and wonders and i'm going to tell you it's going to happen there tonight well you better do that out of the realms of faith to where that it has nothing to do with you otherwise you're so under such pressure there's no way you can flow in the holy ghost okay i understand you can't you're not going to move and function in the holy ghost under pressure why does under pressure mean you're relying upon your own ability that's what under pressure means you put it on your own self to make this happen huh now i'm just up here i'm just up here worshiping ah uh, I just ever seen, I'm, I've come to praise him tonight. You know, when I step in the building, I don't ever feel any pressure to minister. I don't. I'm just like, I'm going to worship him. Uh, however, I'm going to tell you something else, too, though. I know if I'm going to flow in the gifts of the Spirit, I'm going to have to touch heaven. I'm going to have to participate with him. In other words, I'm going to, I know my exceedingly great need to worship in a way to where it has nothing to do with the sound of my voice. If my voice sounded like, ah! I would be doing it. I would try to do it soft so I wouldn't disturb anybody else too much. But it would be, oh God, I'd be doing it with all my heart. It would not matter what the sound of my voice is. I watch too many people trapped in that listening to their vibrato. Oh, it's, you're just looking at the wrong thing. How do I sound? Conscious, oh no, I didn't put on deodorant. Whatever. It's just got to stop. That stuff has got to, you got to go beyond. I mean, if, you, if you're concerned about whether or not you put on deodorant or not, I, I mean, you might have to stand at half mass until you all of a sudden you touch heaven, you lose self-consciousness, and it doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, listen, I mean, tell you over and again, we've watched the, the, the Spirit of the Lord, the presence of the Lord come into the building and fill the building with a sweet aroma. It's wonderful, especially when you're around a third world country and everybody's got serious B.O. I mean, you talk about the bird of paradise flying up your nose. Try to take an airplane from Port Moresby to, to, to uh, Wewak, Papua New Guinea. <laughs> you can't even breathe. You're like, you want to stick your head out the window, but the window doesn't come down because you're in an airplane. You can't even breathe. But I'm going to tell you right now, when the glory of God there, a sweet aroma of heaven rolls in, and it's like, it smells like roses. No, I mean, living in the inspiration of God, living in a place where that now you're more conscious of what Father's doing than what, what anything else in life, and it's really about being about the Master's business. Okay, I can have faith for the things that I'm doing because God's going to supply them because in my heart, there is, I don't care what anybody says. People sit around and they can try to make believe and oh, try to nitpick things apart and with their own human judgment. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm wide open doing everything I'm doing about advancing the kingdom of God. Therefore, it is easy for me to receive the supply of faith that God the Holy Ghost gives so that I can do the things that I'm doing because it's all supernatural. It's all miraculous. Huh? People around you, you're going to have always, you're going to have people around you always criticizing. There ain't going to be no end to it. Do you understand? When I was a real young little guy, my great aunt said to me, said, let me just tell you what, you know, you got to be prepared for in ministry. Get ready. Are you listening? Yeah. I said, well, one day a, a man took his, his um, son into town with him to, to go to market and they took their, their mule with him. And then the, and the first, and they were just walking together. And the first group of people they came along and said, "Man, this is ridiculous. You guys are stupid. You got a mule and nobody's riding. I mean, you should be riding the mule." So the guy wants to please the people. He hops on the mule. The next group of people he comes to said, "This is terrible. You know, you ride in that mule, and here your son is walking." So he puts his son on the mule to satisfy the next group of people. The next group of people come. Ah, oh, we can't believe how terrible you are. Right, man, regardless of the beast, both of you up there got your big, you know. Uh, 
themselves up there on that poor donkey. So they both got off again. Now they're back where they started. And that's just the way it is going to be. You're going to have to just get rid of men and men's opinions and being run by men's opinions. It just don't even matter no more. It's about, I want to be led by Father. If I'm led by men, if I'm constantly trying to please men, and people live under fear, and thus they try to please men. Oh, yes, oh, yes, always yes, yes, yes. They're not, it's not a yes man out of servitude. It's a yes man because I'm trying to please everybody. And you're never, you're never going to flow in the Holy Ghost. So many preachers and ministers have great giftings, and they can't flow in the giftings because they're, the intensity and the pressure of the people are so weighty upon them that, that and, and everybody's got these expectations that they've written him letters and met, left phone messages and emails, and he knows he's walking in to about a thousand different uh, intense opinions that are on him, that he knows that he's got to try to please all these folks. Well, you can't flow in the anointing that way. And I can't flow in the anointing not wanting to please people either. Ah, you know, it's, it's not even about that. It's about just being caught away in heaven. It's about, it, Father, what your will, your will. It gets down to something so simple. To do thy will. As soon as I begin to do the will of God, I cease from the will of men. And that's what Peter talks about in 1 Peter chapter 4. It's essential to flow in, in the Holy Ghost. Guess what? The Word of God tells us what's essential to flow in, in the anointing. <laughs> and, I, and having relationship with the Father. And, and the beautiful thing of it is, his Father starts us off with just a very, you know, basic, simple, anybody can get this call upon the name of the Lord, and there's a relationship. But I'm going to tell you right now, it gets much bigger than that. How big do you want it to get? Well, there's some people, look, we can go and learn from Samuel. Samuel was dedicated to the Lord. I think it's a place in everybody's life that they've got to decide, are they going to be consecrated to the Lord? Do they want to be dedicated to God? And in other words, there's, I'm separated from his business. I understand I'm for kingdom use only. I'm for, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm branded. Not USDA, <laughs> but I'm branded for kingdom of God use only. <laughs> Amen. Are you with me? Yeah. Kingdom of God use only. K-D-U-O. What a, what a brand. And, then, and so here he is. He's dedicated to the Lord. What does he do? He sits in the temple. He lays before the presence of the Lord. His life, he's, he's got a place where he lives. He exists before the presence of the Lord. Look at that story. He exists before the presence of the Lord. Now, in existing before the presence of the Lord, tending the things of the kingdom of God, tending the things of the Father's house, what happens? He then ultimately has a place where he stands before the Lord. This is how the gifts of the Spirit and begin to, begin to develop. And what happens to this guy? Not one single word that he spoke fell to the ground. Everything that came, he declared came to pass. God made sure that he brought it to pass. He upheld everything that came out of his mouth. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't it wonderful then that you take it one step further and it's not just something about someone else. Oh, I wish I were Samuel. But where you realize that you get to be you in God, that you get an opportunity even actually that goes beyond him. However, you can't be so compromised and so polarized that one part of your life is serving men and serving yourself and another part of your life is serving God. Because what's going to happen is it's going to work counter against the two. You can't serve the both. You can't serve God and men. And what happens is you're pouring in your whole life all day long into you, into your purposes, into what you think you're going to do for your own life. And 10% of it at best goes to the kingdom of God. You're 10% available. Think about it. In fact, you're strengthening within your life those things that you would actually rather overthrow. You're actually strengthening in things in your life that actually run hindrance to God and the Holy Ghost. I, you need to get this thing turned around. You have to understand that to get it turned around. Hallelujah. And sometimes I just want to grab people and shake them and say, look, man, you're messing up real bad. I'm just messing up. Because I watch people all, I, sometimes it, it seems to me people that are more conscious that they're messing up, you know, are actually doing more yielded, and people less conscious of it are doing less in terms of being yielded. You know, but I, I mean, I'm not trying to espouse some mental game that you're trying or mental exercise. I'm just trying to tell you, people just get out of it, out of the realms of self-interest, and begin to participate with what God says, and God the Holy Spirit will baptize it. He will light it up with His glory. And as you begin to praise Him, He will overwhelm you with His praise. A cloud of glory will come upon you. He will fill you with His praise. I've discovered that the more I talk to the Holy Spirit, the more that I get to experience his reaction. When we're, and then once again, I'm going to say this about um, praying always, continuing in prayer, praying con this continual prayer. It's really, 
that interaction. It's, it's, I'm, I have this place of dependency. I'm walking this thing out with the Lord. You know, Father, I want to, I want to, I want to, you know, if it's nothing else, you're in, a, in an intense job. Lord, I want to be able to have a, a good attitude. Strengthen me to have a good attitude. And when you're in an intense job, you're going to be saying that several times. Oh, God, strengthen me again. <laughs> you know, because I just pounded my finger with this hammer, you know, or whatever. And, you know, or somebody, people aren't participating. I want to just show you love. I want to show you grace and show you glory. I don't want to show my own. I don't want to give place to uh, a, 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 a development where I'm depending upon myself and my own discipline and my own manner and my own earthly and human concern and sensitivity to ultimately represent God. I want to come to a place in God where I'm depending upon Him to give me the ability to represent Him. This is a relationship that ultimately then finds us so interactive with the Holy Ghost and wherever we need, we're this there. We know what's happening. I know He's in me. What happens is in that relationship, we become more conscious of His presence, more aware of His presence. I lay my hands on people. I don't even think about me laying my hands on Him. I think about Him laying their hands on Him because I'm in Him and He's in me. So it isn't a, it isn't a how, how anointed I am. I mean, I see people walk around in the dynamics of how anointed you are. How anointed you are? What does that mean? I mean, is Christ in you? There's a bigger factor here. You know, have you given yourself over to the Lord Jesus Christ? Um, I'll just take Geneva for, for example. You know, she's plugged in on Wednesday night. I, I'm watch, I watch everybody, how plugged in they are. And, of course, people who are deeper in the anointing know how to yield more to the anointing. They constantly get checkups from me. I'm like, I'll tell them at the end of the meeting, hey, what's wrong with you? You know better, you know. You know, how to t you know how to stay in this realm, stay in the realm. And then there's, the, there's those who know how to properly respond to that. If you know how to properly respond to that and you know how to flow in the anointing, I'm going to tell you. If you don't know how to properly respond to it, I'm not going to tell you until you learn how to properly respond because all you're going to do is be all upset about this. I thought it was doing so good. And you're going to have to get over that because you're not going to move on with God with that kind of self-interest. It's, 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 it's actually more obnoxious than my face. I practice in the mirror these faces. Okay, how can I make this look really obnoxious so people can begin to get a little snapshot, a Polaroid, instamatic, remember? The Polaroid, an instamatic picture of what you look like when you behave that way. Don't do that. That's ridiculous, man. You're, just be so hungry for truth, so hungry for God. Recognize it. I just, it just it takes some small adjustments, and I want to made in me. I want to be have the liberty. I want to give God the Holy Ghost the liberty to correct me because I want to be not on this... You know, this growth curve that you can barely tell the difference between the growth curve and the x-axis. Are you with me? Does everybody know what I'm saying? You know, y-axis, x-axis, and the growth curve is barely dis indistinguish barely distinguishable between the flat axis itself. You want to be on a growth curve that's like, you know, through the roof. It's exponential. Just bang, it goes straight up. That's, that's actually the growth curve described for us in the Word of God. It is an exponential growth curve. It's like we start off in, boom, fullness of God. <laughs> and it doesn't top out. I mean, how exponential is that? Give me a break. But when people are so living under fear, so living under self-interest, so got to have their way, so protective. Oh, I got hurt last time. Oh, you little, you little sissy. Why are you even out here? Get off the porch. You need to go in the house and be babysitting in the crib. Because you out here right now where the, where, the, where the reality of life and the intensity of the issues are coming at you right, left, and center. Hello? You need to get hidden God. So now in that, I'm like, come on, man. Tell me. You know, prophet would show up and say, listen, I'm going to read everybody's mail. I'm like, read on. Tell me, come Lord, speak to me, let the floodlight. When I say, oh God, let the floodlight of heaven shine upon my soul, it's truth, man. It's not like, oh God, tell me in a way where I can hear it. Oh God, no, no, good, don't bring it too heavy. Don't tell everything, just like the stuff that is going to, you know, you know, I'm not going to lose face in. Oh God, come, just let it go, let it fly. Let everything that you want to say about me, everything that needs to change in my life, everything, God, that is hidden, let it be exposed, everything that belongs to deceit, everything that belongs to the shadows, everything that I'm doing that is incorrect. Oh, God, I want all of these things to go before me now. I don't want them to come behind. I want to deal with them now. I don't want to face them later. I want to get on with the program. I want to flow and function in a deeper manifestation, a more, a more radical manifestation of these giftings. These giftings 
hello, are already here and already available. And they're already actually in you. They've just not been developed. They're held back. They're held. They're on hold. They're just laying dormant, as it were, lifeless in you. Because at some juncture in time, you've got to make decisions. We've got to make decisions that I'm going to stop participating with the things that run interference with the Holy Ghost, the things that run counter with the Holy Ghost. And it's not the flesh. It's simply the self. How, okay, I'm going to stop living my own life, doing my own things, my own way, and I'm going to truly get over here in the realms of the Spirit of the tr of spirit truth and I'm going to say, Father, you will be done in my life. And now I, I, I want to I wanna interact with you in a way to where that every day I want to be able to experience a greater manifest presence. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lay something heavy on you. I'm going to lay some heavy responsibility on you. I believe that you can begin to have a hunger that places a demand upon God. You can have a desperation. In other words, if you really believe these things, so all of a sudden now, let's just take it in a practical relationship way, and you're going to prayer. You want to be effective in heaven in, in, in your prayer. You want to bring prayer and petition before the throne room of heaven. And I'm not talking anymore as I was talking earlier about praying without ceasing. Because, once again, that's a dialogue going on between you and the Lord. Of your reliance upon Him, you're looking to Him to give and supply to you the things that you need, to give you the wisdom. Not just, I don't ask God that one all on Sunday. Oh, God, give me his wisdom all the time. Okay, and that's really where it's at. But now I'm actually now in a place of that prayer and supplication. And I'm bringing petition before the Lord. I want, I'm, I've got a time set aside before, with the Lord where I'm meeting with him. I've got an expectation when I go to that meeting. You know what my expectation is? Not to get through my prayer list. That's not my expectation. My expectation is not to pray for an hour or two hours. It's not my expectation. Guess what my expectation is? My expect expectation is that the manifest presence is stronger than it was last time. And if it isn't, I'm extremely disappointed. I said, if it isn't, I'm extremely disappointed. But you know what? When you have a relationship with the Lord, the way he wants you to have a relationship with the Lord, you're not going to be disappointed. You're going to let him sort it out. Huh? I'm going to tell you right now, I had everybody that I knew slapping me upside the back of the head continually continually hey been doing it wrong hey that ain't right either i mean continually even the holy ghost because first and foremost i let everybody else do it everybody else everybody else in my life you know in ministry slapping me up by the back side of the head no that's not the way you flow no that's not the way you operate no that's not the attitude you're supposed to have. no that's not the way you're supposed to do it and like okay come on bring it okay i want to be i want to get this thing right you know sometimes people would tell me stuff that i was like wow man i cannot even wrap my head around that, that is so not even real to me i just have to go you know, with the right attitude, I just, you know, lay before the Lord with as right of attitude as I could have had at the time. Sometimes I did really well. Sometimes I did really bad. But then I would just simply say, Father, make this real to me. Yeah. And it, sometimes it would take like two or three months. You know, that's how delayed I was. Somebody say something to me from the Lord. And two or three months later, it was like, Eureka, I get it. Oh, yeah, okay, I can see that now. But my heart was right. My heart was there before the Lord. I want to get this right. I wasn't walking around, but I'm just such a loser. I wasn't walking around feeling like, oh, no, people don't like me. They don't, why weren't they? Why would they be more sensitive to me? It has nothing to do with it. I want to get this thing right with God. I mean, come on, you do that in school or on the job, they're going to fire you. They're going to say, look, you know what? I'm, you know, you're in the wrong, you're in the wrong, you're in the wrong field. You're in the wrong profession. You need to go, you know, over and do something else. So it's just like, okay, I want to be transparent. I can take it. <laughs> Are you with me? Yeah. Somebody said, I got big boy pants. I can yeah, take it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I can take this. Tell me, tell me. Holy Spirit, tell me. Because he wants to tell us. He wants to correct us. He wants to show us how many things we're doing wrong. But what if we so are just so hanging on to ourselves because we live under the torment of fear and harassment that we can't take another person telling us that we're doing it wrong again because we're just so burned down and with hurt. We just got this gigantic wound. You need to get healed. You need to get healed. And then once you get healed, you need to stop making your, your own self-worth so important and make who, who God is and what Father said he wanted to do so important to you. I'm so earnest about seeing signs and wonders and miracles. Sick, the sick healed, the dead raised to life again. His word go forth, the manifest presence of his glory being communicated because that's what he wants. That's what he's described. I love being in the middle of it. I don't want to be in no boring place. I mean, I'm, I, I don't like to be 
in in any kind of a boring situation. I want to throw some excitement here. Out. Life equals fun, yeah. you know. And the more the life, the more the fun. And God's got all the fullness of life, so I want to have a whole lot of fun. I want to listen to, listen to some deadheaded speech. I want to, I want the moving and the activation to the power of God in my life. Everybody should want that. Every, and the more you want that, the more you're going to have it. The less you want that, the less you're going to have it. If you live under the framework of what you want, your expectations, what you define as good or bad, then that's all you're going to get. That's all you have. But all of a sudden, you shifted. Now you're living under the expectations of what God defines as good and what Father wants and what, you know, He would have us to, to have going on in our life. Everything, sh the expectations shift. Now, when you begin to recognize, folks, everything is according to your faith. What do you believe is going to happen? Huh? Yeah. And if you say, uh, I'm going to walk on the water. Well, that's good, man. Go get it done. Okay? Let's do this thing. Get it done. And they're out there stepping. I've watched, uh, I've watched this happen. You know, I've done it myself. You know, it's like <laughs> you take a step and it's just, just, just sinking. Okay, come back over here. Father, I just thank you for the anointing. Why do you need to do this, man? You're out here by yourself practicing walking on the water. This is stupid. Okay? Really what I want you to do is I want you to practice interacting with me and my manifest presence. I want you to come over in this place where I, you'll interact with me enough to where my, I can make myself real to you. Then in that place, in that context, now you're not going to go be playing games with God, practicing, doing experiments of whether or not you can walk on the water, trying to prove whether or not the Word of God is real or false. Huh? Or even trying to prove your salvation. It's like, you know what? We're like the devil and Jesus all at the same time. We're telling, we say, we're, we take the devil's part. You're the son of God, walk on the water. Okay? Well, now we don't take Jesus' part. We, we blow it. Okay, I'm going to try. And we do, <laughs> just do it. We're just working all this against us. And then, oh, I must not be a son of God. I must not be a servant of the Lord because it didn't work. And I mean, goodness gracious, the devil didn't even do nothing. He just stands back and says, leave him alone. <laughs> They're doing such a good job on their own. I'm going to go work against somebody who's doing something. So we got to just get all this craziness out of our lives and recognize this happens just as an overflow. This happens so naturally. We're all of a sudden, we've been given our life to allowing holy emotions to be stirred. There are different, we got to get this. There are emotions that are stirred in our lives based upon the way we naturally and normally interact with people around us. And I mean, it goes everything from wanting to hug somebody to wanting to fist fight them. Okay, are you with me? It goes everything from being happy about yourself to being sad over yourself. And most of what we are happy about or sad about is really about us. It really is. It's about how we feel about ourselves. And, and how we feel about ourselves is how Jeremy feels about us. My goodness. <laughs> What a hectic <laughs> life. What a, and then and now you've got to times out how many people are in your life. And you're going to try to squeeze all these people. My, you on a roller coaster that's like, like none other that's ever been created. I mean, it's got so many ups and downs and turns. and You're never going to have a life. You're going to be crushed. And then what people do is they try to mitigate the pain. And that, then that creates all other kinds of responses. And other kinds of interactions that eliminate you from the community and the fellowship and the kind of life that God wants to develop within our lives where we're just dependent upon one another, where we're body, we're, we're, you know, compassionate with one another, love each other, love being around each other, no matter what people do, no matter how they behave. And so we have to recognize that there's constant decisions going in our life that really we're basically doing nothing but serving ourselves. It's against the rules in hacky sack to serve yourself. You know what I'm saying? It's against the rules in the kingdom of God to serve yourself. It isn't supposed to be about how we feel, how I feel. It's supposed to be first and foremost about how do you, what do you want, Father? How do you feel about this? What do you desire? I'm, going to, I'm here pleasing you. So therefore, I can be in a, in a Methodist church in, a, in an ultra- well, I'm going to just call it ultra-orthodox backslidden Methodist church. Okay? This is ultra-orthodox backslidden. Okay? Emphasis on backslidden Methodist church. Where everybody's supposed to sing, sing boldly but not too loudly. I mean, you've got the rules. Have you ever read the rules in the Methodist church? It's just like five pages of rules of how you're supposed to sing. My goodness gracious. 
And how are you supposed to behave yourself? Okay, and now all of a sudden, I'm just totally, total abandonment. I've got my hands up in the air, okay? Because you know you're supposed to do that because now you're basically messing with someone else's space and you got to be very careful about other people's space that you don't draw attention to yourself or distract them from what it was they're doing, whatever that was, in the midst of the church, okay? <laughs> I'm now liberated. It isn't, I'm here, Jesus. Lord, I'm going to touch you. Throw me out if you want, but I'm not even thinking about that. Because bottom line of it is going to be so beautiful that, you know, there's too many people going to be impacted by anyone who begins to stand up and interact with God. Anyone who begins to stand up and interact with God is going to be a light. It's going to be noticeable. It's going to be something beautiful. It's going to be something wonderful. And that's what we want to teach you how to do. If you want to learn the school of the Spirit, the, the Holy Ghost is about one single thing, and that is glorifying Jesus and bringing us to Him. Revealing Him, making Him known, and bringing us to Him. That's what he's always doing. It's no problem. When I know what the Holy Ghost is doing, hey, <laughs> I, want to, I want to see Jesus. Well, come right on in, okay? I'll make him known to you. How much do you want to see him? Huh? How, how much are you willing to come now and begin to interact with him in truth? How much are you willing to allow him now? Because when you get near him, anything that's wrong, anything that's of a lie, anything that is sin is going to begin to get exposed. And how are you going to react to that? Because that's where people start drawing back. That's where they start running and hiding. They start getting ashamed. They take off and go run to hide. I heard your voice and did hide. I'm running and hid. People do it, sub, do it subconsciously. They do it emotionally. Come on, man. <laughs> you know, if all the Lord's, if all of a sudden the Lord points out and says, hey, you're naked. You say, oh, Lord, forgive me. Give me some clothes. <laughs> you know, <laughs> whatever he says. Look, I don't want you to do anything. Say, I don't want you to do anything. No, I'm brasique. I'm brasique. And the beautiful thing of it is, is when we trust in the Lord Jesus, then immediately when the Lord points something out, in anything that the Holy Ghost points out, it is immediately cured by the application of the blood of Jesus Christ yeah. through repentance. Anything that Satan is doing is never fixed. Can't be fixed. You're just like, you got to turn, your, your face becomes downcast. Usually, though, your face becomes downcast because, understand, Cain is the model of all downcast countenance. I, I, we take precedence. Presidents in the Word of God describes to us every person's emotion and attitude. Cain was unwilling to receive the offering that the Lord made. He wanted to do it his way. And the Lord said, no, you can't do it your way. I there's an offering for you that crouches at your door. I'll take it, offer it, and you'll be accepted. No, no, no. He's offended. He can't, start, he can't get past being offended. He can't be, get it past that, that one of, and first and foremost, comparisons and competition that was going on but which is a part of the demonic realm. And that's all he gave. He was caught in that between him and his brother. Well, why did Abel? Abel got, Abel, his was acceptable. And mine wasn't. So he's hurt. He's offended. He's caught and trapped in realms of self-interest, of competition and, and comparison. People, I really, you people come to me and they say, well, I thought we were going to learn about fl function, flowing, and gifts of spirit when we come to school of spirit. This is how you do it. Because function, flow, and operation and the gifts of the Spirit are so natural. They just come, they just flow. They're just there. They're just available for anybody who's in God. I'm just going to have to point out the things that are running interference with that flow, with that ability to just rest in Him, that, with that ability to just move in, in Him. Because there are a lot of things that can get in our way. We've got to learn how to be completely deburdened of them. You can't walk into the platform with a bunch of concerns and issues. If I walk into the platform with a bunch of personal issues, you know, I, I, one of the things, I've never looked at giving, a giving accounts of how much money people have given. First and foremost, you know, it's just an act of, pro I, I didn't want, I did not want to in any way have any possibility of me dealing with partiality over it or dealing with any kind of attitude over it. I just didn't even want to do that. I just want to find somebody who could faithfully do that because I didn't even want to ever have to even get into the, into the platform the pulpit knowing hey you know what this person been coming here to church you got all kinds of critical attitudes and whatnot and they don't get they've given a dime since they've been here and that's usually usually relates sometimes criticism level of criticism the way people give and the offering has a lot to do with that i'm going to take it another level P once again finances 
Ministers not only get in the, the pulpit and are hindered from flowing in the Spirit because they're having to try to deal with everybody's opinion and how everybody feels about it. Well, so-and-so over there doesn't like tongues, so we can't do that. And so-and-so over here doesn't believe in the gifts of healing, so we can't do that. And this person over here doesn't like me to yell very loud, so I can't get too emotional. And this person over here, they want me to stand in the pulpit the whole time so they can see my face and want me to slow down so they can keep their notes up. And this person over here wants me to wear green, and I'm wearing blue today. And I mean, on and on and on. And there is no ending of it. Now, all of a sudden, now they got, we just before they went into the pulpit, hey, pastor. Pastor, we're thirty thousand dollars behind, and you better that offering better be big. Now you, you're 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 hog tied. You you can't flow in the Holy Ghost. You got thirty thousand dollars, and everybody's looking for you to raise it in, in the meeting. Forget about that nonsense. You when you're tied up, you can't move in faith. You 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 can't really pray over your bills and bring those things to God and 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 and, and, and expect to move in faith for Him when you all. Oh, tied up emotionally about it oh my goodness we're gonna, we're gonna go bankrupt oh everybody's gonna hate us oh, our, our, our testimony's gonna be ruined he, you gotta get deburdened of all of that stuff it can't even you gotta have a, some trigger point i say this all the time what we did in our lives in my relationship and in my uh, relationship with the lord and, and relationship with each other is when the things were were overwhelming we just simply said well let's watch what god will do you know if i start to get if i start to I know, for example, I'll get something in God. I got something in God right now that I'm getting ready to go do, okay? And so I'll get it, and I'll say, this is what we're going to do. We're going to step out and do it. And then when I go to do it, if I got any kind of check, I just, I just keep on doing what else I was doing. I'll put it on hold. I don't do it. Huh? Okay, for example, I need to buy a truck. I mean, just make it real material. I need to buy a truck. Two years ago, I needed to get the truck. car was not running properly. We're hauling things back and forth from here to Oregon. Man, I've got to get a truck. I just think this thing isn't, isn't working. I went out. To, I started to go get the truck, and the Lord presented it. I was, you know, and then a year later, I, 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 it comes back to me. I need to get this truck. I know the Lord wants to give me the truck. I know he's laying it on my heart. And I start to go get it, and I get a check. It says, I forget about it. I'm not going to do it. Huh? Because I'm going to come under this realm of inspiration. I'm going to come under this place of where God governs it. Oh, you need it. You know God told you. know. No, I want to... Yes, I need it. I, I can move in faith for it, but I'm going to wait for the divine inspiration. I'm not going to push it. I'm not going to force it. You don't force nothing in God. But now one morning, I'm, I'm basically just getting dressed, and as I'm getting dressed, all of a sudden I said to my wife, I'm going to go get the truck. And she said, well, praise God, because faith downloaded in me. Now, there's been times where I've had a download of go get it, and then on my way to get it, I fill a check, and I don't do it, because the check says don't. You can't move in a confidence and a boldness when you got a check. <laughs> you just stop. Okay, hey, I'm pretty slow. It took me a while to get this. But after I got it, my goodness, it works effectively 100% of the time. Okay? And so bottom line of it is, I told Ann this, and within like 45 minutes, I called her and said, I found the truck. She was shocked because the Lord led me directly to the place. I pull up. There it is, everything that we wanted, everything that we've talked about, everything we thought of, everything they got. I mean, my goodness, it's fully everything, you know. And it's plus then they took $10,000 off of the, the lowest price they have for it because they just so happened to show up the day after the President's Day sale and they decided to leave the sale tag on it. So, okay, um, then, then, uh, I, I actually, they gave me the keys. I drove off with the, the, the truck. They finalized everything and still had no loan on the truck. And two months later, I got the loan. So I'm like, one day I'm driving the truck and I'm thinking, man, I need to put more miles on this so they won't want to have it back. <laughs> but no, I'm just telling you. <laughs> I just feel it back with my head. I mean, the reality of it is it was such a miracle. It's like, I, who, who, who's got the story like that? That you drive off with that extension truck and two months later, I'm telling you, two months later, they're, they're, they, give, they, give, they find somebody who's going to take the loan on thing. It's just, mir it's just a miracle. When God does it, it's a miracle. Amen. It's like, get, that, get out of here with this. And they're pushing me off the line. Yeah. You know, usually you're on there, you're having to work your way through it and argue with the brains. What do you want to pay? I mean, you know, here, take it. Here's the gig. <laughs> it's like the thing was going to blow up or something. You know, they got to get it off now. It's just God. It's just the way it goes. We move, we, we move in inspiration, okay? N not just in need, right. but in inspiration because it's a gift of faith. Gift of faith is fundamental to every dimension of the operation of the gifts of the Spirit. That is relationship. It's a love thing. It's a huggy, kissy, what do you think now, Dad? What do you want me to do? The Holy Ghost, I got I, I'm holding on to it. Where, where are we going now? What's happening now? Hey, what, what are we going to do now? You know, when we look in 
2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16, we understand how the flow of these wonderful, glorious things come. And we look at the highest, we look at the highest uh, manifestation of it, which was the deliverance of God's word to us. And I believe, believe me, God doesn't have a bunch of different ways he does things. He, he functions, I mean, in the, fun, in the way of a realm. He really does it one way. He does it in truth. He does it in love. He does it in the realm of his holiness. So when you see him do it, something like this, and you read verse 16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Ha <laughs> ha How that holy men of old were moved, moved by the power, moved by the, uh, the, the hand of God, moved by the presence of the Lord to do that, which was now captured in the verses and the chapters and the books of this bible we understand that's how it works he moves i mean you can really feel the wind you can't wrap your arms around it you can't contain it you can't control it but when it's blowing my goodness you can feel it and when it's not blowing you know it's not blowing so is the spirit when it's blowing you when he's moving you know i know what i'm supposed to be doing and now on that particular that i'm speaking now specifically in terms of actions and doings okay it's just like i was saying at the beginning a person i sit down with a person in counseling because i have a gift there I, the spirit of counsel will begin to work spirit of wisdom will begin to work as soon as somebody asks me a question boom if they ask me in truth and it's not they're just not trying to set me up with something they ask me in truth it activates within me i know when somebody wants to hear when they don't want to hear because it's it's the gifting that's activated in me just activated by the request and, you know, the person says, oh, you must be a mind reader. I'm not a mind reader. This person did it and the Lord. I'm not a mind reader. You asked me a question. What I did was I answered you out of the realms of inspiration. How did I do it? Did I, you know, did I get all concerned about it? Oh, let's go to prayer. Oh, come on, let's join hands right now. Join hands. I don't, I don't join hands. What's your hands on me, man? Well, where's those hands been? I mean, honestly, I feel that way sometimes with the people that want to join hands. And it's just a, it's a sense that I have. Touch not the unclean thing. I mean, there's more times... I've had touch not the unclean thing. I'm not agreeing with the unclean thing. I know where your hand's been. You know? And just a little bit, people look at you and go, you know what, you do have to be so rude. Yeah, sometimes you do. You know, especially when you, I, I live by inspiration. You know, it's like a, a writer trying to get inspiration. He can't get any inspiration. He's trying to write a book. What does he do? He starts reading a bunch of other books. He starts reading broadly to try to get inspiration. I pray in the Holy Ghost get inspiration. To get inspiration, I simply submit myself to God in the realms of the context of the kingdom of God. Do I necessarily have to have a word of knowledge for something that has nothing to do with the kingdom of God? Absolutely not. I mean, I just, you know, if the Lord wants to do that, then fine. You know, he did it for Ruthiana the other day for her marriage. The woman said, I'm going to give you free something or other. I can't remember exactly what it was. Wow. If you can answer this one question. You know, why do they use flowers in a wedding? She didn't know that. And the woman who asked the question had asked many people the question and nobody got it right. She got a word of knowledge to drive off the evil spirits. And the woman's like, you just got, you just got this free. Now, that is an example where somebody gets a word of knowledge. No thinking about it. Just, just, just download it. You just know it. You just say it. Boop. Huh? It, you might almost think of it as an unqualified guess. But it's just there. It's just there. It just comes right out. It's natural. It's just there. It's who we are. We want, what we want to be is those people that are continually in the presence of God so that that can be what's manifested in our life. That's just who we are. People that stand in the presence of the Lord, we know the secret things. We're able to function, flow, and operate in the spirit of the secret things, who is the Holy Ghost, the spirit of truth. I've got to make sure I don't allow lie and deception and things that are running counter to him. I've got to make sure I don't allow doubt and unbelief. I've got to understand how to move and function and flow and operate in this realm of faith. And fundamentally, what shows me an function and operate in the realm of faith is the word of God, which is the word of truth. And it is also this interaction with the Lord where I'm just so comfortable. You know how comfortable I am with him? You know how secure I am with him? There's nothing can separate me from him. Nothing. And that's how secure I am. Thus, I have this love relationship, and out of that love, faith works. And nothing, I don't care. You can get a preacher up, basically running everything that possibly can be run down, and if you have any of it in your life, you're on your way to hell, and I'm sitting there going, hallelujah. I don't want none of it, and I'm not separated. The condemnation can't work on me, man. Why? I destroyed it. I rose up and smashed it. I don't allow it to create within me its deception. 
and its deception is the worst kind. You know why? It brings a separation between you and the Lord. I'm not allowing that for a second. My faith is in the blood of Jesus Christ. And so therefore, not for a moment. And now we want to we want to train you to do these things. We want to teach you how to do these things. I want to teach you how to get out of your mind. Why should you walk in your mind and your reasonings and your logic when you can have the mind of Christ? Somebody said, I want the mind of Christ. Then you're going to have to shut down your mind and your logic and your rationalization. Because the Lord heard what you said around the table. He heard it. And he made everybody know who's in that realm. He knew what you said. We know how your reasonings were. And they were false. And now you want God to meet you at the other end? When you actually moved in something that was false, he didn't mean you at the other end. You don't have to go back to the beginning. Start over. Repent, start, repent allows us to start over. Isn't that wonderful? Oops. Ha. Huh. I can go back now. I remember that discussion that we had. And out of that discussion, we made a decision. And that discussion was based upon deception and lies and our own thinking. Uh-oh. And now we've been living in it for how long? Some people have been living in it for their lifetime. Some people have been living in it for two weeks. Some people have been living in it for two months. Some people have been living in it for two years. Then all of a sudden, you become in this relationship with the Lord and interact with Him because you just so want Him and you, you want Him to so saturate your life. You just want Him and it begins such a radical truth and you can't live without Him. He begins to show you, hey, you just now made another decision out of fear. Hey, you just now made another decision out of criticism. Hey, you just now made another decision out of false judgment. Hey, you just now made another decision out of self-interest. And all of a sudden, you even get, you're gonna, it's going to come at you from so many different directions. You're going to become a bit insecure. My goodness. I'm just, every decision practically I'm making is out of a wrong motive and out of a wrong inspiration and out of a wrong behavior and out of a wrong thinking process. And that's very good because now in that insecurity, you can now start resting upon God, the Holy Ghost, and say, Lord, I just want to be directed by you. <clears throat> and, and people who are going to be disciples and who are going to be raised up to be disciples and people are going to learn real quickly and really, truly have a distinguishable growth curve that's different from the x-axis. <laughs> there are people who are going to learn how to rely upon their leadership when it comes to making big decisions. Hey, this is what I feel like God's telling me to do. What do you think? And then they know that they got leadership around them. They get a download from heaven. They'll speak by the Spirit. They'll even say, because when, when you learn how to speak by the Spirit, you learn how to speak inspirationally. You don't make it up. If it hits you, when somebody's telling me, hey, I've got a dream I want it to be interpreted, as soon as they say that, if they say, when, as soon as they speak that, if it's something that God wants me to do, I'll immediately be hit with the interpretation before they start the dream. If it's usually, this is almost 100% accurate. If somebody says, I've got a dream, I feel it's, you know, something from the Lord, and they're telling me that, and I don't get inspiration on it, it'll be the same way all the way through. I'll just listen to it and say, I don't know. Because I don't, I don't try to take symbols. Well, you know, the scripture did say that a wolf represents this, and I, there was a wolf in there, and I saw a wolf coming out, out, out against this. And, and Forget that's intellectualism. That's nothing. That's meaningless. That's endless babbling. Huh? It's inspiration. God speaks by inspiration. He moves us like the wind blows. I can feel the wind. I can feel it. You know that wind? You know that wind? You know how quick that wind comes when a joy hits you? Boo! Huh? It's a, joy is a beautiful training ground. You know how quick that wind comes when that love, that overwhelming love of God hits you? Huh? When a song begins to burst in your heart? That's the way it is. And he's, in, he's got the reins of it. We don't have the reins of it. We get to move with him. He's moving all the time. The more we give ourselves to him, the more we get to move with him all the time. And that's ultimately where we begin to discover the beauty. Instead of the slavery, we get to discover the beauty of praying without ceasing. Instead of the obligation, the joy of it. Because it's really not really so much as we would define prayer. It's a servitude. It's a submission. It's a bowing. It's a, it's a, uh, the prost you know, you're, you're, you're laying yourself out before the Lord. Stretching yourself out before him. Relying on him. Telling him how good he is. What did Daniel do when he went to pray three times a day? Uh -huh. Understand that that's got to be the foundation of the way he functioned, flowed in the gifts of the Spirit, and the way he grew and matured in them so much so that the kings and the noblemen and the mighty people, he impressed the most, the highest realm of power. You don't, you don't pull the wool over the eyes of the highest realms of power. People know about power. They've learned how at that juncture they really learned where people are just blowing smoke huh 
And they would say of Daniel, he has the spirit of the living God in him. They have the, he has the spirit and his companions are the spirit of the gods in him. You know. Three times a day, he prayed. He laid himself out and kneeled down before the Lord and prayed. What did he do when he prayed? The scripture tells us, describes his worship, his giving thanks of just blessing the Lord. It wasn't bringing the prayer list, oh God, you see the finances, Lord, you know, we're going to die and not be able to eat next week if you don't do something. And Lord, you understand that the bill collectors are right around the corner. Because so much of the fear and the torment of our lives and the problems of our heart are wrapped around the, do the do almighty dollar bill. And it can't be a God to you. And once again, it stops ministers from flowing in the anointing. It holds people back from releasing. I've watched it over and again where people have, God's challenged people to give and they've withheld. And it's blockaded them from moving forward in God. Hey, listen, I'm telling you right now. <laughs> moving in faith takes a whole bunch of love because it's scary. How scared are you? Yeah, I'm going to tell you right now, moving in faith takes a whole bunch of love because you have to lay everything about yourself on the line. Hallelujah. With total abandonment, you've got to go for it all. It's going to the cross. It's being willing to be a martyr. It's being willing, you know, to be condemned and, and, and thrown and cast in jail and lose your, the loss of, your, loss of your life. That's faith. But when you're so secure in love, you can do it. Give me that microphone. I got something from heaven. Listen to this. Hallelujah. Of course, there's respect with it. There's respect. You know, I've been in many contexts where the wind of heaven moved upon me, where a great moving of the Spirit was upon me, and because there was ministry already functioning and flowing there in their, it's in their house, I just sit there and I hold it. And the Lord never makes it smaller. It always be, becomes bigger. Ooh, it always gets bigger. Anything God puts in you, don't stay. It doesn't shrink. It explodes. Then there's been times where I've been in meetings. You know, I, I was at one time, I was traveling with a, a minister, and he was ministering in a meeting. It was about, um, I don't know, somewhere between six and 10,000 people. It was jam-packed. It was a huge convention hall. And I was, and the friend I was with, the minister who was in charge of the meeting, he was basically falling asleep on the, up on the platform, you know, because he was so tired. He hadn't slept for a long time. And I was basically not too far off from that, not, but not quite as bad. And then he's up there, get, he got my attention. He's like, and I'm like, and he's, because he wants me to minister. So I wasn't, I didn't have nothing bubbling, nothing bursting, huh, nothing exploding, but now the demand's placed on the anointing. So I'm like, I don't, I don't, I don't know a verse of scripture. Might as well not buy, grab the Bible and search for a verse now. Huh? Because you're on the front row in a, in a room with, with somewhere between six and 10,000 people and the last song has been sung. And now you have been invited to the pulpit. <laughs> Hallelujah. But, but to walk with God makes a difference. To walk with God. It wasn't the first step. It wasn't the second step. It wasn't the third step. But when my hit, foot hit the platform and I began to walk, boom, downloaded from heaven. What is that? inspiration that cannot be contained and it comes out that with an explosive you know when the tongues hit you and it's just so explosive isn't that beautiful it is a wonderful thing when you begin to recognize tongues as a miracle act of god's divine presence see these miracles shall follow them that believe tongues when it comes like that it is a miracle act of God's divine presence. It is so wonderful. I mean, I just, I can go just to a whole nother level, as it were, in interaction with the Lord, just because I'm consciously aware of that. When I'm not, I wasn't gonna go to prayer. It wasn't on me, as it were, a, a mental thought. I'm gonna go to prayer. I'm gonna start praying now. Uh, just, I'm arrested. And I mean, sometimes the Lord arrests me in some, don't quench the spirit. If the Lord arrests you like that, and you learn how to come under his divine inspiration and it's just not something that you're doing, get that all worked out in the prayer room. But you know you living in this thing, you mature in this thing, and you're standing in a front of a bunch of people and a staccato, it's you, go with it. God knows exactly what he's doing. Don't <laughs> Because it hits you so hard, you're basically doing that. Because it takes over. That inspiration of God takes over. It's that, it's that inspiring. It's so inspiring, it moves your being. Huh? 
my spirit moving my body all over the place right now. Huh? That's my spirit doing that. The Holy Ghost can do that. When the Holy Ghost is given free course in our life and is allowed to move freely through our lives because we give ourselves to him, we sow to the things of the Spirit and are there out of that are re reaping the God kind of life, the life that only God can give, those rivers, those expressions of divine glory and power and might. Oh, my, 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 my. Yeah. <laughs> it's about the most silent you can give it because he just takes over. You live under the inspiration, want the inspiration, long for the inspiration. How do you do that in the most effective way? Give yourself to the inspiration. Be led. When the song is going on, know that there's somebody who's anointed of God to lead and follow that. Don't get lost. You know, don't get lost in doing your own thing because really what people do when they get lost in doing their own thing, they're doing what Satan did. It's like the prophet who told a friend of mine, actually this prophet told Joel Stockstill, and Joel's very accurate, in relaying information. And this prophet told Joel, he said, listen, I'm going to tell you what, God came to me and he showed me how it was uh, that Satan was able to overthrow the angels that stood around the presence of the Lord. And it was in relationship to many of the, the deeds and activities of what's going on in many churches today in people's hearts. He said he's saying, he said he folded into this huge, beautiful accordion, accordion and began to sing this most beautiful music. And it was phrase after phrase, stanza after stanza, verse after verse of worship and praise unto God. And then in the last little phrase, he said, and worship me too. And there's that goes on. Look at how am I doing. Boy, don't I sound good. Oh, you know, isn't my, whoa, look at me too. Look at me too. Observe me and my talents and what I can do. It's the same thing as worship me too. See, the Lord wants to get this thing so in, 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 focus for us that every shadow is made revealed to be what it is a part of darkness ha huh. did you know that a shadow is a part of darkness not a part of light yeah. it's a part of darkness it's a place where the light is blocked my shadow is blocking the light god wants to bring us to a place where there, he wants to point out the shadows some people just <laughs> living in the darkness and we want to point that's got to be first and foremost and somebody tells me, all, I hear people tell me all the time how they want to have a great relationship with the Lord. And I say, well, how much do you spend time in the Word? And I, I, inevitably, I'll, I'll relate that over and again, that people just don't spend much time in the Word. How, how hungry are you? How hungry and thirsty are you for the things of the Spirit, to receive things of the Spirit? I mean, I'm telling you, I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. You're going to go, you know, I'm not looking, I'm not, I don't go listen to people in ministry on YouTube or whatever because I'm trying to drum up another sermon. I'm hungry for the things of the Spirit. I'm hungry for the things of the Word. I'm listening to this voice of the Master. Father sees that. More than anything else, it begins to adjust our spirit and dial us in, if you would, to begin to hear His voice. His voice isn't hard to hear. He's always responding with something. He's always speaking right out of our belly. There's, I never interact with Father and not get a download from Heaven. A download right out of the realms of revelation. That's what Father has for us. And whatever he wants to tell me, I take it big. Because you may think it just applies in one area. Huh? It applies in everything. Most every time I ever preach a sermon, what's going to happen is I can understand out of that sermon what's going to unfold, events and opportunities that are going to unfold for me out of the rest of between that, time, that moment and, and the next moment of God, sometimes a week. Sometimes a month, and then the Lord will give me something. Like, for example, I'm ministering on a Sunday night, and, and then I know that this thing is going to unfold. I've got to be ready. Things are going to be unfolding in this way in another week, another month. Or, and then I hear something again on Wednesday night, and once again, I know a little bit more about what's going on. It's not something just trying to fit into some little isolated part of my life. It's my life. It's God giving me wisdom and insight. It's not necessarily connecting the dots. It's just re recognizing that the dots are already connected. Just recognizing the dots themselves. Just recognizing that the picture's there. If you're just blind. You know what blinds you? Self-interest. will blind you. Being overwhelmed with your own issues will cause you to become deaf. You won't be able to hear. God speaking right, left, and center will show you exactly what you're supposed to do. Laid it out there for exactly how it's supposed to go down. Can't hear, can't see. So these are the things we want in the school of the Spirit for people to be able to know. Out of that wonderful realm of relationship, out of these basic laws of the Spirit of life, understanding that we're going to function in love. Where God's going to show us how to move in love. 
in a relationship, number one, with him, because you ain't loving anybody until you love him first. You don't have any love to give until he receives it from him. So it's directly as a result of a divine interaction and fellowship and truth. It's always got to be truth. And so then we begin to shine the floodlight of heaven upon our own souls, and we see where we're not loving. We're, we receive, and with God, it's either love or hate. Anytime you've got a problem, you're hating. Anytime you've got a finger and accusation you're pointing out, that's why if you read Isaiah 58, it'll do you a great, you know, great service. Because when you quit pointing, you know, sticking out the lip, pointing the finger of accusation, when you keep, stop doing your own pleasure, and speaking your own word, doing your own will, huh? Then the Lord says, I'll feed you with the heritage of Jacob and you'll ride upon your high places. And that ain't changed, okay? Isaiah's not talking to us out of the realms of the law. He's talking to us out of the realms of the spirit that is a word that belongs for every generation. And then the Lord lays it down too. Again, once again, he says, keep your tongue from evil and lips speak no guile. Hearken to me. Come now, children, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. In other words, I teach you how to stand and, and be captivated by the awe of his presence. Is being in awe of who he is. Keep your tongue from evil and let your lips say, speak no guile. Depart from evil and pursue after peace. Guile primarily is falsehood, deception. That's what it is. That's what it means. And therefore, I recognize, wait a minute, I can't allow, I, you know, we, it's easy to see adultery. It's easy to see fornication. It's easy to see witchcraft. It's easy to see murder. It's easy to see this and that. But it can sometimes can be a little bit more challenging for us to begin to see where we're allowing deception to go on in our life where we're allowing falsehood to go on in our life. I'm not going to have a false face. I'm not going to look at you, tell you that I love you and honor you and God and go tell somebody, you know, something different about you. That's, de that's deceit. That's guile. I'm not going to make plans around you and say this is, you know, and talk to you on a level of some plan and then go behind your back and make another plan that's contrary to what we said. That's guile. It's deceit. Well, you could say, well, yeah, of course you don't want to do that. You want to have a good relationship with people? Well, that's fine, and that's important. But I'm talking about something much higher than that. I'm talking about you being able, me and you, being able to walk in an unlimited flow of the glory of God. Does he still love us? Absolutely. Can that be ultimately categorized, uh, categorized in the place of, 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 of secret unknown faults, unknown sins, things that are apparent to you? Sure it could be. But I'm going to tell you right now, relationship with the Lord, as you begin to interact with Him, the light of God's going to shine, and Father's going to show us, and, and we're not going to have, there's not going to be secret sin. Praise God. Secret sin because you're out hiding in the dark. Come out of the dark. Come over here in the light. Let's live in the day. For there's need, no, no, no need of sun or moon. For He is the light thereof. I'm, come living in it now. If there's one thing that I want to be able to do, and, and, and it's, what, it's what I actually devoted last school of the spirit too and you might want to go back and listen to the things that the holy ghost said at that time is to really show you how easy it is how natural it is to to walk in the gifts of the spirit and that all you've got to do is identify in your life the things that are imprisoning you to your own hurts issues problems where you're burdened down with other things and now you're disconnected from him because you're so connected with you your problem I don't have any problems. The Lord is my shepherd and I have no problems. You know, I tried it out for, on people for a while. They wanted to come to counseling session and they'd sit down and they want to tell me their problems and their issues and they'd start telling me and I'd say, well, that's a lie. And then they went on to the next point and I said, well, that's a lie too. <laughs> and then they went to the next point they wanted me to help them with and I said, well, that's another lie. Three lies. Now there's three strikes you're out. And so after a while, people are like, well, if you go talk to him, he's just going to tell you that it's just a lie. It, it really is. It just is a lie. It's a work of deception that has drawn you away and distracted you from the provision that God has for you. It's a lie of deception, of self-interest. It's a lie of deception, of distraction. You've either created it or you allowed a, de a devil to create it for you. Probably no other person created it for you. You created it. You took and interpreted whatever they said. Because, I mean, I'm going to tell you right now, people can take good things and make them bad. Over and again. Wait, man, I want to be there to bless the person. Oh, no, they told you. They, they, you just disaster, you just destroyed them. Because it's all about the eyes of the builder. So people create it for themselves or demon spirits create it for themselves. Problems. For me, where does my shepherd? I have no problems. 
If I have any cares, any concerns, I take it to care. I take it to him. I cast all my cares upon him because he cares for me. And he's going to take care of it and he's going to fix it because I don't know if any human being can fix my problems. Not, I, not even myself. Thus, I just take it to him and he'll take care of it. And no one can sort it out. No one can know it nor understand it but him. And so I'm very happy to, to be completely deburdened and walk out of his presence having no problem, no ill effects from it. And, and by and large, in many respects, no memory of it, except for those things which the Lord would remind me of. He said, no, no, no. I want to because you know what? When you've got problems with the Lord, it's going to be on your head. And we look at you, we're going to see it on your head. So we're going to know, hey, there's a problem here. Say, ah, oh, hey, he's got a problem with me. No, God's got a problem with you because you've got a problem with him because you haven't repented because you haven't gotten right, something right. You haven't settled something in your, in your life. And so you constantly feel like, wow, is he, is he talking rough to me? Huh? Is he looking at me? Huh? Is he saying that about me? When you start saying that, the answer is yes, yes, and yes. So quit hiding, quit running. <laughs> and if you're not sure what it is, and probably you will be, what we'll do is we'll hide. We run in shame and we hide. We run in shame and we hide. And we so run in shame and we hide from God subconsciously that we blind ourselves to what he's saying. Because we close our ears to the truth so that we will not hear it. Everybody runs from pain. Huh? But we want to we want to understand that this isn't pain. This is life. So we just say, okay, Lord, sign the right of heaven upon my soul. Search me out. If when I say search me out, if there's any legitimate thing that comes up, I'm gonna say in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for forgiving me. And if it's something that I need to go to my brother and ask for forgiveness for or my sister, I'm gonna go do it. Hallelujah. Huh? So there's no reason to hide. There's no reason to wonder, hey, well, maybe I should be concerned about this event or that thing that I did. Just repent. If you're concerned for a moment standing here, what are you going to be when you stand in the judgment seat of Christ? And Father wants to bring it to that level of truth where nothing can be hid. How do you want to bring it to that level of truth? If you do, then you're going to be able to function and flow and operate with the spirit of truth in an unlimited way. Because what we're talking about in the school of the spirit is we're talking about how to cooperate fully with the spirit of truth, the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. <laughs> Where we've invited God to take such full control of our life that he, he knows he's in control. Now he speaks to us in the night. He knows what we're going to do with it. I'm not going to sit on it. I'm willing to run the risk of being wrong. The other day, I'll just tell you, one day, one day I had an audible voice from, uh, audible voice. I woke up hearing the audible voice of a person in ministry speaking to me, and I called them up, and I said, hey, listen, you know what? This is what's going down, and they got all upset. Fine. I did what I was supposed to do. Thus, because I did that, then the Lord gives me another one. I get this all the time, where all of a sudden I'll be woken up, or wake up in the morning with a dream and with a, with a word pounding in my head. Say this and that to so-and-so. And I'd say, and I go, I text them, or I leave them a voicemail, or talk to them on the phone, and I say, here, this is what, it, this is what the Lord says. Sometimes, and especially when it goes deep, you know, when it goes really deep, you don't want to hear that. What are you telling me? And now I know, because I'm, I don't understand. Sometimes you say words from heaven, it takes people two months to like it. I've lived this. I've been the partaker of the fruit. But if, you, if I didn't do anything with it, it's if I didn't do anything with it, if, if, father, if, father, if father shakes me in the night with a dream, that somebody's in trouble, and I wake up, and I feel trouble. I woke up the other night. I felt trouble. What am I going to do? Oh, just try to count sheep to go back to sleep, watch a television program, so I'll be, whatever. No, i got to pass on my night down to my 16 Ponderables. Because right there with me, even in the middle of the night, with that trouble is a Holy Ghost response. And it comes strong like that when it's trouble. The next day, I get a phone call from my dad. He almost died. He said, I almost died. I thought I was leaving this world. I, I did not expect to see the morning. Well, somebody was shaking. I was shaking. You know what? I did not know about what the trouble was until he told me the next morning. But the Lord doesn't need to tell me all the information. I'm living under inspiration. 
huh? When I'm troubled, it ain't me. It's God, you know, when I got a dream. If I didn't have faithfully tell the dream, the Father's not going to give me another dream. He's going to give it to somebody else because he gives it so it can be told. It's for the purposes of the kingdom. I got to know where it's directed. If God pushes me and places me in a position to have to speak to these different folks and these different people and these different communities and these different situations and I withhold from speaking, he's going to quit speaking to me. I'm not a faithful steward of his word. Now, what's going to happen if I allow the fear of man and the, and the fear of acceptance to rule over me? Oh, well, my goodness, there's a, there's a huge ministry in it. And then, then they basically think I'm a flake. And they're going to tell everybody I'm a flake. And, you know, whatever else. That fear, you know, I'm just trying to paint the picture for you. Because everybody has to deal with it at some level. Oh, if I stand up and begin to give this word that is burning in my spirit. Listen, I think that there is a lot of things that people have got to work out there. And, 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 and especially in the, in the context of the meeting. The Lord has not called you to stand up and give a word of rebuke to the audience. You ain't that. You don't know your ministry. You do not know your gifting and your calling. Huh? You step beyond your gifting and calling. You need to speak the truth in love. You need to understand how to exhort. Reproof belongs to a shepherd in the house, not to a sheep. People just don't understand that. If I'm, if I'm with another ministry, I'm a, shep I'm a sheep in the house, as it were. I'm functioning in the body of Christ in another way. I'm not going to take up the correct, any kind of correction unless I look at the minister and I say, listen, the Lord has given me this very strong, are you going to release me to say what it is that I've got in my spirit because the Lord has given me a very strong reproof. And it's up to him to say no or yes. And I leave it in his hands and I don't have to go beyond that. Now, when you want to begin to flow in the context now of prophecy and giving forth words, it's going to be sweet. It's going to be a sound of rejoicing and joy. It's not going to be, <laughs> because that ain't going to do good for me. I could do that maybe and get away with it. But anybody else is like, please, when does this end? It needs to have the sweet sound of heaven to it, people. You're with me. You need to learn how to, first and foremost, you got to learn how to speak the, love, the, the, the truth in love. You also need to learn how to take rebuke before you never give it. You got to take reproof before you can ever get it. Give it. If you go home hurt about reproof, you never go, you're not ready to be used by God to give reproof. Huh? Besides that, it's a special anointing and grace. God gives an anointing. He gives an authority to do it. You listening to me? So I want you to move past the fear factors. But at the same time, you've got to understand how to flow, how to function. In what, what manner of gifting you're allowed to operate in. You've got to learn that, you know, my goodness, you may be having a bad week. And now you're going to bring hell on everybody else's head. Now we've got to be careful with that. Huh? It's like one preacher said. He said, don't give the woman, in the, time, don't give the, woman the microphone in the time of her monthly. Because everybody's going to be in the hell. <laughs> or they're going to be in judgment under the wrath of God. Now the world's going to end tomorrow. And then too far from the truth because people have got to learn how to rule their own spirits. they got to understand their ministry, their context, what they have the right to do, what they do not have the right to do. You're not right on a bunkie, right? Huh? You're not the, you're not the prophet uh, T, uh, T.B. Joshua. You a member in the body of Christ. God wants the sweet praises of his grace and glory to flow through you. Hello. I don't want to hear the agonizing of your pain when you begin to speak in tongues. You need to settle that in the prayer room at your house and pray that there's the agonizing not there no more and the sweet sound of heaven flows. Because then you're looking at me and you want me to give you the heads up and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be going. I'm going to be as patient as I possibly can do to say, dude, just wait. And you just need, when, I, when I'm like waiting, I'm not suppressing you, controlling you. I'm saying, you still got some things you need to settle in the prayer room of your house. And now it begin to flow. So I just want you to get, I want you to get the whole dynamics, I, I dynamics of it. And now, it, we, when you, you know, you got to get past the fear factor. You got to get past the intimidation. You got to get past the mental game. And the way to do that is to come under the glorious inspiration of the living God. And to know that every dimension of your life is submitted to the things which God has, has 
purpose for your life, in the office that he's placed you in right now, in the position, in the part of the body that he's placed you in right now. And, I, and I'm going to tell you right now, I think that you know, one of the things that the more you love on people, the more you just minister to people one-on-one, -on -one, the more you're interested in people, the, more, the stronger that gifting comes. The more you hug people, the stronger the love comes. The more you give yourself to caring about people, the stronger the flow of that compassion ministry is. The more the things are within your spirit where you're not basically looking around and seeing a problem. If you walk around seeing a problem in the midst of the church, if we give you the microphone, all we're going to hear is problems because we're going to hear stuff coming out of your spirit. You're listening to me. And those things have got to learn how to be tempered because now it becomes, and that's the, that's the fine line between the inspiration of the Holy Ghost and human inspiration. And human inspiration comes out of the sense realm. What you perceive, what you see or thought you saw, what you've heard from somebody else. Man, I'm going to tell you right now, you talk about keeping your heart with all diligence for out of it precedes the issues of life. And once again, we're talking about the flow of the gift of the Spirit, aren't we? You got. You just don't want to hear stuff. You don't want to hear. I don't want to hear that mess. I don't. I, don't you come bring that st slime me with that stuff. You know, and then if you do hear it, you've got to learn how to release it and let it go. You know how I deal with it? I just call people up right there on the spot. Somebody tells me something about somebody. I say I call them up. Did you say such and such? I do it quickly. And it, you just tell me exactly what, because I'm not going to carry it into the pulpit. I'm not going to carry it around because it's going to come out. I don't care who you are. You carry some offense around. Or you carry something you heard in, by the hearing of the ear around. Huh? And you don't get it clean and you don't get it dealt with and you don't get it forgiven. It's going to keep coming. Eruption is going to, you're going to continually have a volcano. Okay? <laughs> and be a volcano. Call them up. Did you say such and such? Well, I didn't say it. So and so said it. Well, what's their telephone number? Are you available for a three-way call right now? That's me, man. That's the way I deal with it. Because I'm going to be deburdened from it. I'm not living a day in it. And this happens in people that are around me. They know that. The people that come and give me information, they know that. Well, so-and-so said this. They did. Did you hear it with your own ears? Yes. Um, what did you say? You repent right now. I give them a space of time to repent before I hang that phone up. Uh-huh. Do it. Live this way. Don't have a burden in your heart because you're going to clog up the flow of the Holy Ghost. Well, I feel like he don't like me. You need to get that settled. That's an imagination that's damning you. You know why? I say, somebody said, that's a harsh word. Yeah, a lie will damn you. Huh? They shall believe a lie and be damned. Right? I'm not being no damned person over here. I'm not believing no lies. You should know the truth and the truth will... I'm going for the truth over here in liberty. I'm going to be free to love everybody, hug everybody, bless everybody. Unburdened by what the sense realm said or what, you know, so-and-so said, he said, they said. Secondhand information is not immiscible in the court of heaven. We're going to get rid of that now. We're going to put a stop to it. And so I'm on the phone quicker with secondhand information. Did you hear it with your own ears? No. So-and-so said. What's so-and-so's number? Well, I don't know what it is right now. I'll have to call somebody. Call them now. Well, can I do it later? No. But I've got to go to the hospital. I'm bleeding. I don't care. <laughs> number now. I mean, the urgency. It's got to be an urgency. It's an urgency. And that's my point. Why? I want to be freed. <laughs> I want to know the truth. I, want to, I don't want to walk around with burdened and problems. I'm going to keep my heart with all diligence. I'm not going to allow anything in here but the truth. Hallelujah. Now, if people, after I'm done, they want to sit, sit around and play their little lie and deception game, that's their choice. I'm just not going to be involved. Amen. amen. So, amen. So this concludes the, this school of the Spirit. I don't know which one it is. Hallelujah. But it's another one. And we're going to do it one more time. I'm obviously at the end of, well, actually a week from this Sunday, I'm, I'll head out for Africa, for Zambia. And so, and I'm gone for like 11 days. And so I, so I wanted to do two back-to-back -back schools of spirit. And, and I, you know, one of the most important things and what we're doing right now in the ministry is just saying, we're going to give ourselves to a culture of seeking God. 
If there's no people going to be sitting back in the back row or hanging out, just spectators, as I said, a species of potato that is unedible. But everybody's going to get involved. They're just going to come forward. I mean, after we're done, you know, basically ministering people, while we're ministering to people, you want to hook up with that. You want to sit on the edge of your seat. You want to be a part of that miracle. You may not hear what's going on. It's okay. You can be a part of it. You can learn how to feel and sense and move with the movings of God. And when you do, you begin, you begin to inherit more of that flow in your life and you want to hook up in that way. And then just come learn to stand in the presence of the Lord. Even if it's late and we're only standing in the presence of the Lord, just standing here worshiping and just letting him minister to us and speak. Ultimately, what's going to come out of that is great inspiration. People are going to have songs. They're going to have revelation. They're going to have doctrine. They're going to hear from heaven. It's going to be something that's not about rebuking anybody. Okay? It's not going to be about reproving anyone. It's going to be about encouraging everybody. It's going to be about, here's what I'm hearing God say, that we need to go cross town over there to 5th uh, and, and, uh, and E Street, and there, there's going to be a harvest over there. I mean, these, these are the kinds of things that God wants, you know, just sit around here and slap one another all night. and going to be doing anybody any good. Jesus. We'll stand around here and hug one another, encourage one another, bless one another, provoke one another, good works in God. Hear things from heaven. Hear direction from heaven. Let the Lord speak through us and develop us more in the giftings of the, of, of, of the utterance gifts and the revelation gifts. Praise God. Hallelujah. And, and the power gifts. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Well, amen. amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Find everybody, as many people as you can, hug them, tell them that you love them. It's just good to be a... Uh, an active member in the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. Not paralyzed, not dead, not withering, but active living member in the body of Christ. Right. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We love you.